So if you've been telling me you're still calling a plumber, stick around. My name's Bob from Bob'sPlumbingVideos.com. You've landed in the right place. I'm going to solve your problem right now. And guess what? It's not going to cost you a penny. Happy plumbing. <laughs> Hey, welcome folks, Bob here from BobsPlumbingVideos.com. I'm getting some inquiries for some viewers. Uh, and in particular, I got one last week about asking how to remove, and this is what I thought was kind of perplexing, the plastic nut. He was having trouble disengaging the plastic nut, which I have never found in my career. Uh, I have found that if, if you have the old fashioned brass supply valves, AKA ball cocks, they often were connected with a white metal composite nut onto the brass shank. And in those cases, uh, very often what would happen is when you went to remove these nuts, it just would not come off of them, just frozen on there. Uh, you know, my preferred tool of choice is my trusty old six inch wrench. I would go in there and try to uh, remove this nut counterclockwise. And what started to happen was, is that the fill valve inside the tank would turn and what I did, you know, to prevent that is I actually set up another wrench inside the toilet tank around the base of the um, fill valve in the opposite direction to keep it from turning. And we're going to jump up there and I'm going to give you a shot of that. And then we'll come back down. All right. I set up a shot inside the toilet tank here to show you what I used to do in particular on the brass supply valves, the older ones that had white metal nuts down at the bottom. While I was trying to go counterclockwise on the bottom, the, the fill valve actually had a tendency of turning. So I would set up my six inch pipe wrench around the shaft of the fill valve and set it up so the handle was hitting the tank so that when I proceeded to go counterclockwise, uh, this would give me uh, somewhat of a holdback method uh, to, you know, while I was turning down there. Now, if it became increasingly difficult and that nut down on the bottom absolutely would not move, then we got to take the next step, which is to cut it off. And what I'll do now is we'll, we'll drop back down to the bottom and I'll show you, you know, what you're going to need to do. Uh, not so much with plastic lock nuts, but in particular with metal, uh, metal connecting nuts, uh, as opposed to, uh, brass or plastic connecting nuts uh, or even again lock nuts the lock nuts used to come uh, in all different uh, kinds of metal if they were brass they would come off if they were white metal composite uh, they would get absolutely fused on there and you actually would have to cut them off so let's drop back down to the bottom and I'll show you what you could have to do uh, if you're ever faced with this situation all right, here we are back down on the bottom. And, and as you can see, I already, to save time, I, I sliced this nut, but let's back up a minute. This is a plastic rig. Most instances today, everything's gonna be plastic. I mean, this is the new way of doing things, plastic fill valves, plastic nuts, etc. But back in the day, we had brass fill valves. And in some cases we had brass coupling nuts with brass lock nuts, but in a lot of cases we had white metal nuts both lock nuts and coupling nuts, and they absolutely would get fused on here because of the two dissimilar metals that electrolysis would take place and it wouldn't come off. So I would initially attempt to unscrew it, then I would go up top, put my wrench in, come back down, get my six inch wrench, attempt to disengage this, and in most cases it wouldn't come off. And I wouldn't force it too much. Well, in the beginning I would try to force it, but uh, you know, my father always used to tell me, you crack the tank, he says, I'm gonna crack your head anyway. If you determine that this is not going to come off, and again, I had a listener who said he had a problem getting a plastic nut off. Now, that's never happened to me, but that's not to say it can't happen. And if it does happen, it's the same procedure. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come in here. And in the old days, I used to use a hacksaw blade, 32 teeth per inch. But today I use my trusty little close quarter saw here. I make my cut in my nut, and the goal here is to cut mainly you know practically all the way through but not quite down to the threads once i do that you want to come in here with a fine blade screwdriver uh, and you want to get in here and you're going to want to see the way that nut is splitting once that happens 
you can start it with your six inch wrench. And this will come off like this. And the goal is not to actually cut through the shank, but as you can see here, I, I got some a bit of a score here, which is not a big deal. If it's just a score, I wasn't concerned with it, but if I cut substantially into the shank, it's time to change the fill valve. Now, if you're gonna change this fill valve, uh, you really don't have to go through the, the you know, the pain of, of slicing this nut. You can just come in here with a hacksaw or a hacksaw blade or your little mini saw, just cut the shank right off, remove, remove the tank supply and, and put everything back new. But let's say you just wanted to change the tank supply. Maybe the tank supply was leaking and you wanted to leave the valve in. If that's the case and this nut would not come off, you're going to have to go through the uh, pain of slicing this, splitting it, and getting it off. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's, that's pretty much the only way you're going to get this off. You don't want to be in a position where you're going to force this, even with the wrench up top and side. You know, a lot of guys have a tendency of, like, really trying to force this thing. And trust me, you will crack the tank. Uh, back in the old days when I was a young man, I learned the hard way. So you don't want to do that. So guys, I hope you got some useful information out of the video. Hopefully uh, I saved you some grief. Uh, please keep coming back, watching the videos. I have a lot more in store for you. Uh, I really appreciate you watching my videos. And until next time, um, stay well. And like I always like to say, happy plumbing.